All right, so <laughs> this thing came out on Banggood, and um, I think before the first day, it already had like 100 pre-orders to it. And I don't think anybody really knew what exactly it was. And I was in that camp as well. I, I honestly had no idea what it was because uh, that, this ISDT company, which I think is an awesome company, already had this little battery checker thing, which is great. It's really cool. Um, probably a lot of you guys already have one. It's it's um, a really neat little thing. It's got a nice little OLED screen that shows you a lot of cool information, which is flickering in the video, which you can't see properly. Anyways, it shows you your um, cells, shows you a lot of stuff, and it has your low voltage warning. And it's just a really nice battery checker in general. So it's it's really nice to have. It gives you the nice percentage readout. So when this thing came out, I was just like, what is it? And it, on top of that, it has this battery go technology which is not really fully explained and uh, all it really shows is that it has this this port here with the XT60 pin has a third pin right up there that that gold bar that's the third pin that apparently works with the battery go technology and as far as I can tell ISDT is developing this battery go technology themselves and I think other companies are supposed to pick it up or do something with it I'm not sure um, the battery go on the website if you read it it says it'll do things like keep track of your battery tell you if you've um un over discharged it tell you how many times you've over discharged it basically it keeps track of your batteries and in order to do that you need to have some kind of something inside the battery that monitors that stuff and feeds that information to this thing or somewhere else i mean it's got to have like a serial code something something else needs to be in the battery on top of that, I have no idea how they're going to do it through just one pin. Maybe it's going to use like power line Ethernet type deal and use all three pins for like a serial connection of some sort. But it's just, it's really interesting to see that they are really trying to innovate battery technology, which is great. I mean, it's great. We're not, it doesn't seem like we're getting new batteries that are any better anytime soon. Might as well innovate what we've got. Anyways, let's take a look at what this thing actually does. So I'll tell you right up front that it's basically a glorified battery checker and that's not a bad thing because it has some really cool features that are really 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 interesting so you plug it in it does 8s first of all which is really nice and you'll notice that it has the voltages to the thousandth that's a lot of numbers and so one of the things it does is balance the cells and i don't really understand this because the chargers themselves do a pretty good job of balancing on their own. I don't know why you need to do this fine tuning balance unless you have a battery that's just like totally out of whack and needs to be rebalanced or something. Not sure, but it's really interesting that it does it. If you need to balance your batteries, you've got something that here that does a interesting job of balancing down to the thousandth. Uh, that being said, it I left it balancing for about 45 minutes and it still wasn't fully balanced down to the thousandth. So it does take a long time to balance the pack, but I mean, yeah, if you really need to balance your packs. It gives you nice readout, as usual, as you would expect. One thing it doesn't do compared to this little battery checker is that it doesn't give you a percentage readout of how much battery is left in your pack. But the good news is that it's got a USB port over here, and when I plugged it into the computer, it attempted to update. So it's got a nice update feature, and it, 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 it will apparently have updates in the future. When you look through the menus, it doesn't actually tell you, it doesn't do all the things that it, it could potentially do, but it does do a couple of really interesting things, really super interesting things. You see that USB charge? That, I have been carrying this primarily as my phone charger because it's so convenient and uh, I know like it's there's a bunch of other options and I have other things that charge my phone too external chargers but the reason this is convenient is because it does it at like two amps like it really pushes the amps out and it gives you like an informational readout and tells you how many milliamps is being drawn and what's going on with the charge process and it's just it's nice it's nice information and it just works great and I have so many lipos hanging around that why not just take a lipo with me to work or wherever I'm going. I know it's not exactly the safest battery, but <laughs> take a LiPo with me to work and um, charge my phone that way. And on top of that, it has so many amps pulling out of it that I could put a hub on there and charge a bunch of things at the same time. So yeah, so that is this thing. It's a glorified battery checker that's got really interesting features that I haven't seen elsewhere. And I expect it to have much more features when they start updating it and using this battery go technology. 
Uh, one thing about ISDT, I, I think they're, again, an awesome company for trying to innovate battery stuff and trying to innovate at all. Uh, this is the D2 charger, which is now my primary charger by far because it is so convenient and I've said that in my other video. There's a couple things that I relayed to the company that I didn't like. This little um, jog wheel, it's not actually super accurate. I mean like when you click it one click, it doesn't always move one click. It sometimes jumps around two or three clicks. So uh, they should hopefully, I mean I hope they can make that more accurate because like you're, you're looking at the screen and you're kind of like fumbling this wheel to try and click. Uh, another thing that people pointed out, which I pointed out as well, is that this is a great charger, but it does not have an external battery in plug, which makes absolutely no sense. Why wouldn't they put an external battery in plug on this charger? And I thought it's because they want people to buy their, their you know, field charger, but that's not the case. I got a message to them and they said, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. So <laughs> in the future, I expect this charger to have that external charging plug. And another thing that people recently asked, it also has a, um, an update um, USB plug over here and also has USB charging here so too. So um, yeah, I still like this charger. I think they're probably gonna change that to a USB port so it's more standardized for updating. Uh, so things other people ask me about often is that, first of all, I, I'm kind of just gonna make videos at my own pace because like I, I really just don't have as much time as I would like. So uh, they'll just come out slower. But something that people often ask me is what I'm working on and what I'm, what I'm doing in this space because I'm kind of, I talk to a lot of companies, I talk to any company that wants to talk to me. And I'll tell you there's a couple things I'm working on. First and foremost, the FOSS 2 is, is just about to launch, it's coming out on the 31st. And then I am working on two more frames, one entirely new frame line, which will be a very unique frame line that I'm, I'm still testing, not sure if it's going to work out, maybe it'll just be in one kind of version, and, I'm, and that frame line is also going to be used by uh, another company to launch another product, like kind of in a, in a kit and that'll be really interesting because I'm, I'm trying to fine-tune that product and get the best performance out of it and that is something that's gonna come out I hope sometime soon right now the manufacturer is backed up on uh, the floss 2 manufacturing and uh, one thing that uh, I am very anxious about and very annoyed at is all oh, so many companies selling such low quality very cheap stuff and I've recently been analyzing the low-end market really really harshly and really like really into looking into it strongly and um, it's really interesting when I look really deeply into the low-end market and I'm, and I'm working with a couple companies to make some products that are really low priced that are really decent products because I want it and I think everybody else wants it as well um, lastly well I'm also working on some goggles and working on a controller and like some other things too for two other companies that I can't really discuss. So a lot of things I'm working on that I hope to come out soon. I don't know if any of them will come out. I don't know if any of them will be good. So I'll have to test it myself and report back. Um, another thing that I'm doing is that I am trying to change the experience of flying acro. Uh, once you get better at flying, you kind of, uh, it's kind of on autopilot. You don't really think about what you're doing anymore. And for a long time, I really had to, you know, in my head, think about what I'm doing like the move that I'm doing, like the inverted float. When should I pull up? When do I, but it becomes really natural over time. Everybody starts really shaky, but then eventually you just get more natural. It just flows off your fingers, and it's much easier to fly. But once you get to that stage, you just kind of want a little bit more. So I'm attempting, and especially with like the monster cameras that I really like flying with, which are really high resolution, they really look HD. So a lot of the times, it makes me feel like I'm flying one of my YouTube videos, which is really cool. And so I'm trying to recreate that aura and make it feel like I'm flying it more. So uh, one of my friends flies with a Bluetooth speaker. He actually flies with this Bluetooth speaker. And so I picked up this Bluetooth speaker, uh, of course, from Banggood. Why not? And um, it's, I think it's one of their top Bluetooth speakers. I really didn't do much research, but it's, uh, it's really good. It sounds great. It's adequate for what I want to use it for. And so I'm, I'm going to try and create an experience for myself that I am most comfortable with and uh, I'll share that with you guys and share that with everybody. It's something really personal to me. It's personal to what I, I do and how I fly uh, and I think that it will be hopefully different because I'm working on one of the frames I'm working on is an acro frame and I will have a very specific build for that acro frame to do something very specific for me. I'm working with uh, Richard Howarth Hey, hey, Worth, I, I don't think I said his name correctly, but he's the designer of the Hyperlow. He's got some really interesting concepts that other companies have been inspired by to make frames themselves. And it's been um, really 
cool just inspecting what he does and how he does things. It's very different than how I do things, and he has a totally different concept of things. So I'm kind of adopting one of his designs and um, changing it to the way I I think would fit my kind of flying style best. And I really hope, and I'm also testing a couple of new frame materials, and I hope to have something that I will stick to for a long time. And I'm, of course, going to share it with everybody and recreate this experience that I enjoy so much of just watching YouTube videos with the music that match and just feel like I'm flying a YouTube video whenever I fly acrobatics. That's it for now. A um, couple more videos coming, but uh, I've got to wait for some stuff to arrive first. And I got a lot of things that I'm, I have to test before I can actually discuss with anybody about anything. Um, don't forget to floss, please. Please floss. I don't know if this actually works. Let me know if you've actually started flossing by me asking you to floss because it would be really nice. I feel like I would be really accomplished if I just got just 10% of my audience to actually floss every day. It would be incredible. <laughs> Anyways, take care. Bye-bye.